Hey everybody, welcome back to Planet Coaster, and specifically, welcome back to the Japanese Garden Projects. It's been a while, especially for this map, but something that convinced me to give it another try is the new update which is coming out, which is update 1.8, which is the World's Fair update, and among other things which are very exciting, it actually includes an Asian theme pack, and this is something which a couple of people have already mentioned, uh, for me is kind of interesting because I did a lot of Asian scenery uh, builds in Planet Coaster so far. Mostly Chinese and Japanese style roofs etc that I had to build completely myself. And now all of these items have been added into the game itself. So in a way it could kind of feel like some time that I ended up wasting a long time ago. Where I could have just waited for this update to come out and you know finally get this thing without having to build all of it myself. But for me, it also just made it much more interesting to try these pieces and see how much they really live up to what I was hoping to get out of them and uh, see if it's really gonna make it obsolete to make your own roofs the painful way that I used to. Now, I don't wanna leave you uh, hanging when it comes to what opinion I actually have on this set. I'll come back to this a little bit later, but I think the Asian pieces are actually really brilliant and I was really positively surprised by how fitting and flexible they actually are. Uh, but before that, is uh, there's a bit of an explanation, I suppose, that I need to give about what's going on on the screen right now. So for a few minutes now, I have been trying to pack all of the items that I want to use and have used for this build so far into one custom tag. So something that's been added in this update, which I am really looking forward to, or uh, technically I've already tried here, but since the pack is only coming out later, something which I think is really worth looking forward to is the option to make your own custom tags. So in the past, this has been very often uh, requested by people because it just makes it a lot easier if you can separate all of these scenery items and wall items and everything else uh, based on what kind of theme or maybe even what kind of project you're going for. So in this case, I wanted to sort all kinds of objects that I have used and can use for a Japanese theme into one particular set. So I made the custom tag for a Japanese theme. So I fit all of the Chinese roofs which I'll be using as well as the Japanese wall sets as well as all kinds of random scenery, shrubs, trees and rock work into that one set, all for this particular park. So I don't really have to look for some of the smaller pieces anymore and I can also remember exactly what kind of pieces I've used before so we don't really get inconsistent. So yeah, this is an option which has been requested a lot and I actually really like it. I think it's been implemented pretty much exactly how you'd want it to be. You can just select a piece and then add it to your custom tag. Uh, now I'm already kind of running behind here, here I'm already starting the build itself. So to give you a little bit of a background on this, I got the early review build. So of course I felt kind of obliged to actually make some videos about this and give a bit of a review. As usual also, I don't really like to do those kind of videos where I just kind of list off what's been added in the new updates. You'll just see that eventually and there are plenty of people who do that sort of thing. So instead of that, I just kind of want to pick one of my own ideas and uh, or, or themes and see how much you can actually get it to work with the new update considering all of the new pieces. So in this case, I wanted to open the, up the Japanese garden again, which I haven't opened in quite a while, and try all of the new Asian pieces. As, and uh, something that I decided to do to do that is a Japanese castle build and this is something that I've always wanted to try but never ended up doing because it used to be way too complicated. You'd need so many different roof pieces for this and so many custom pieces that you'd probably end up with thousands of objects in one building if you were to do it the old way. So it's something that I never really quite got to but with these new roofs it's an amazing opportunity to finally try a Japanese castle while also testing the roofs at the same time. So one of my biggest worries about these things is that Asian roofs are very hard to make modular because there is already a difference between Japanese, Chinese styles and especially Korean styles. Uh, all kinds of buildings have different rates of like curvature of the roofs on the sides. So it's really hard to build a modular set for this unlike something like maybe a Bavarian style where 
all of the roofs are more or less the same uh, from building to building and they have the same angle throughout. Now something interesting that I thought, which I didn't think of before, then actually it turns out to be quite a good solution to that problem, is that the roofs themselves are quite modular in terms of how you put them together. There's a bunch of different curvatures and sizes for the roofs, so um, they're a little bit more flexible than I expected them beforehand, because I expected these roofs to just be full tile, grid style roofs with one curving corner piece, and that would be about it. But as you can see from the menu, there are quite a few variations depending on what size or what curvature you want. And of course you can leave the curves completely out of it as well and just have a simple tiled roof. Um, so it's something that I'm actually quite happy with, um, judging from the castle so far. The only thing that I do kind of miss, if I can give a bit of a review, is a curving roof piece which isn't a corner piece. For all of the corner pieces, this set works out brilliantly. But there isn't really a roof piece which works for gables. There isn't really that sort of slight curving roof piece. Aside from that though, it works quite well and there's actually even these gable pieces for the size of the roof and the um, decorations on that as well, which you can see on the front here. It's the white part that I just put down there. So all in all, it's a set which is surprisingly versatile for the not even that many pieces that it has and whereas the preview build that Frontier used for their trailer of this new update included a Chinese style build, I was also kind of skeptical whether it would actually be able to work out for Japanese buildings as well, but from this build at least uh, I am a little bit of a layman, but as far as I can tell it actually works out really well for Japanese builds as well. Really the major differences as I've explained in some earlier videos, is really in the textures and colors, because where Chinese buildings use a lot of stone and a lot of colors, uh, things like that, Japanese buildings are much more, sim much more simple, they don't really use uh, painting on the exterior of their buildings, except for red painting in some cases, uh, they use a lot more wood, uh, so it's a very different type of like color scheme and set of textures that you get from these buildings, but when it comes to the general shape and where they come from. Japanese architecture is obviously very much influenced by Chinese architecture, so coming from the same base, it's very possible to create Japanese buildings from these new pieces. So yeah, I gotta say, whichever artists worked on this, good job. I'm actually very happy with these items. Obviously there is more to this update pack, and in fact it's a kind of pack that I've wanted for a very long time. This isn't something that I've talked a lot about, but I've probably casually name dropped it a few times during the Fantasy Valley series. But the world fairs, especially the world fairs around 1900, I think also 1889 in Paris, and these were the world fairs that you could see for the first time the Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower and uh, all kinds of Parisian buildings that are now very famous. These were my biggest inspirations for the longest time. Not really these buildings in particular, but a lot of the buildings at the time, since this was really uh, an area of, uh, or an era of Art Nouveau and all kinds of very decorated building types just before modernism started kicking in and buildings started getting modern. So I have enormous folders on my computer of all the pictures I could find on the internet of the uh, the expedition, the Exposition Universelle at the Paris, uh, my pronunciation is terrible, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, this has been something that's been such an influence for what I've been doing and really uh, an inspiration as well for me, that it's really cool to see a pack with a very similar kind of theme. Fantasy Valley, in fact, in the first place was inspired by these kind of things and I was trying to sort of incorporate that whole idea into a park, sort of Happy Valley style. But uh, yeah, that's something in the past, and also no, I'll never get back to Fantasy Valley, I'm sorry, it's just way too outdated by now. But uh, yeah, basically that's it about the pack, so there's all kinds of different countries in there as well. There's some Moorish architecture, which I think is very interesting, and I might use to get back to the old Moorish Intamin, which I only released two episodes of right now, I think. So that's, some, that's something very interesting. 
There are some more European style elements in there as well. There's a whole set of Bavarian architecture, which is very interesting. Now we don't have to do all of our timber work ourselves anymore. And just all kinds of new interesting features. There's the Vekoma Boomerang Coaster, or I'm saying Boomerang Coaster, but it's the Vekoma uh, Motorbike Coaster. Uh, I was kind of getting it confused with a booster bike over there for some reason, which is actually, yeah, it is the booster bike version of the motorbike coaster. It's not the Tron version, I believe, that has a different track. Or maybe I'm slightly off on that. I'm gonna have to check on that later. But in any case, it's a Vekoma uh, motorbike coaster of which Booster Bike and Toverland is the first one, so that's how I often refer to it. So that's a really cool addition to the uh, pack as well. And then there's all kinds of other gameplay elements which are being changed as well. We can finally trigger doors, uh, we can set custom tags for stuff, obviously. So there's a lot to check out in the pack. It should be coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And today there should be lots of other videos, likely from other YouTubers who've gotten the preview build as well. Anyway, let me catch up on the build a little bit. So, this is a Japanese castle, and uh, as such, it stands on a bit of a rocky base. A lot of these castles stand on a very tall base. Also, they're very often also built on a hill as well, so they're very visual icons. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have a good hill to build it on here, and I didn't really want to go as far as to build my own hill. So, I'm just building it on this stone foundation to kind of stay with the theme of a Japanese castle. And also make sure that it's kind of towering over the trees of the garden in the back of it here. Because something that I wanted to do with the garden for a long time also, and I couldn't really figure out how to do it, was what they often call shakke, if I pronounce it correctly. The E at the end should just give you a longer E eh sound. But yeah, it's, uh, it's basically a term in Japanese gardening and general aesthetics of borrowing scenery from some other place. So a lot of Japanese gardens will kind of use their surroundings to an advantage. Uh, now obviously a lot of the gardens that I've shown in Tokyo before in the video that kind of started off this whole series, they don't really work like that anymore because a lot of their traditional surroundings have been more or less destroyed by all of these skyscrapers and now they're kind of in an awkward position where they're little enclaves of an old natural environment. But if you go to gardens outside of that, uh, gardens, for instance, in Kyoto or Nara or completely other places in Japan, there are these gardens that kind of use the natural, ter natural terrain around them, like the natural mountains and hills, as a kind of backdrop and sort of draw them into the garden and use them in the views that you have within the garden. And they can do this with all of the built environments around the gardens as well. So a lot of gardens will use maybe a nearby temple and their pagoda or uh, some kind of existing build in the vicinity of the garden as a backdrop for the garden to give it a more interesting aesthetic. So that's something I wanted to try over here as well. So while I'm not really going to decorate the base of this castle too much, it's not something that you're really supposed to see from the ground. It is something to give you a backdrop as you're in the garden uh, to expand the landscape of the garden a little bit beyond the borders of the garden itself. So yeah, I was messing for a very long time with what position this building should have, whether I wanted to have it on this side of the garden or on the other side and how tall it should really be, just because the only reason that this building is here is to be in some of the sight lines within the garden so you can see the castle in the background as a kind of borrowed scenery and just give more flair to walking around in the garden itself. So yeah, that's basically it. We're getting to a stage now where the building is looking more and more finished. This was definitely one of those builds where I started off with a very rough idea and composition of what I wanted the building to be like. And at the beginning I thought it was extremely ugly. I really wasn't happy with it. So that kind of got me worried at the start. But in the end I think it works out quite alright, and a lot of the times with builds like this, as you're building it sort of starts getting better over time. Uh, that's definitely what I felt here. Oh, and something that I think is worth noting about this as well, is that it just takes way less time to do these kinds of builds when you actually have all of the pieces available. 
obviously the result is something that matters quite a bit, but to me it also kind of matters how much time I really have to spend building something. And with the old pieces it would just take hours upon hours to actually make all of these pieces yourself. And here I more or less just jumped into the game after just sketching a very basic idea of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. And pretty much just built this in under 3 hours. Well that is, excluding the amount of times that I started rebuilding things or just kind of was spinning the camera around looking at my stuff. So yeah, all in all, it's something that really cuts time quite a lot when it comes to builds like these. So yeah, I'm really happy with the new scenery. It's definitely something that I would have liked to have a long time ago, but there is no way you can complain about that, really. Uh, it's just really cool to see it finally be in the game, and to see some love for some of the scenery sets that we haven't really gotten so far. Like, Asian is a theme that we've been missing, but also Arabic style, in this case Moorish architecture, is a general direction of architecture that we've been kind of missing in the game. And it's nice to finally see some appreciation for these styles. So yeah, maybe I'll get back to Shikra and actually finish some of the buildings in there as well. But I do have to say that was originally my plan to do in this weekend as well. I just didn't really have enough time for it. If anything, I'm also cutting it dangerously close with making this uh, episode. So we'll see how much time I really have for that. That said, I know it's been a long time, but I've got a Jaegerhorn episode coming up really close to this upload date. So um, yeah, I'll be following this up with more stuff soon enough. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you thought it was interesting to check out a bit of a preview of the updates, and I'll see you next time.